And coming in at number 8 out of 8 for the Ivy League schools is Cornell. Although it's extremely selective with a 10% acceptance rate, it's generally considered more relaxed in comparison to the rest of the Ivy League schools. But Cornell has 7 different schools that you can apply to, and each school has its own academic standards. It's probably best known for its School of Hotel Administration, its College of Engineering, and its College of Architecture. Graduates from Cornell earn an average of $130,000 in mid-career pay, which means you'll get a return on your investment rather quickly. Outside of school, there's plenty of things to do. You can attend any athletic event for free or explore Ithaca for all of its natural beauty. So to get in, the average ACT is between a 32 and a 35, and the average SAT is between a 1410 and a 1530 for a total acceptance rate of about 10%. And next up at number 7, we have Dartmouth and Hanover, New Hampshire. The school has many unique qualities, starting with its year-round academic calendar called the D-Plan. Most colleges split up classes by semesters, but Dartmouth splits up school into four 10-week periods, where students generally take three classes each. This allows students to be extremely flexible with their schedule, with a majority of students going abroad or many students completing internships during the school year instead of competing against other students in the summer. Class sizes are known to be extremely small, and unlike other prestigious schools that have classes taught by grad students, you'll be taught by dedicated undergraduate professors. The average mid-career pay here is around $150,000, so chances are that IV degree is well worth it. Outside of school, many students participate in the outdoor activities that Dartmouth has to offer, like a ski mountain, cabins, and all of the outdoor equipment you could ever want. So to get in, the average ACT is between a 32 and a 35, and the average SAT is between a 1410 and a 1540, for a total acceptance rate of just over 9%. And at number 6, we have Brown University in Providence, Rhode Island. Famous alumni from here include actress Emma Watson and economist Janet Yellen. And academic-wise, Brown is probably best known for its open curriculum, which means students have no core classes and you can actually design your own degree. So you could be a computer science major and take a ton of art classes, or be a music major and take a lot of biology classes. This gives students more academic flexibility than pretty much any other college on this list. And graduates earn a mid-career pay of about $140,000 here. And when you're not studying, you can take advantage of your bear bargains, which are discounts to local restaurants and events around Rhode Island. You can also explore Providence and go to neighboring schools like Providence College or the Rhode Island School of Design. So if you want to get in, the average ACT is between a 33 and a 35, and the average SAT is between a 1440 and 1550, with a total acceptance rate of just under 7%. And coming in hot at number 5, we have UPenn in Philadelphia. Fun fact, the school was started way back in 1740 by Benjamin Franklin, so it's been around for quite some time. Penn is known for many of its academic programs, including arguably the best business school in the U.S., the Wharton School of Business. But Penn also has a highly ranked engineering, arts, and nursing school as well. 30% of Penn students get dual degrees, so it's not uncommon to find a business major who also studies international relations. And the average mid-career pay of students is around $153,000. Outside of school, Penn is known as the Social Ivy, and about 25% of students participate in Greek life. They also give you the option to live in houses with students and faculty with shared interests, like the Creative House, the French House, or the Politics House. That's kind of cool. To get in, the average ACT is between a 34 and a 36, and the average SAT is between a 1470 and 1550 for a total acceptance rate of around 9%. And by the way, you can always subscribe to the free College Crown newsletter packed with tangible tips on how to choose the best college for you. I'll leave a link in the description where you can go subscribe now. And next up we have Columbia University in New York City. You can thank Columbia for many of the inventions we use today, including the FM radio and the laser. It's no surprise then that Columbia has one of the highest ranked engineering programs in the US. The school offers many other programs, all with small class sizes, with an average size of 22 students. So you'll make great relationships with your professors. And graduates earn an average mid-career pay of around $138,000. Outside of school, you can participate in one of Columbia's 500 clubs like the Ballroom Dance Club or the Student Run Radio. You're also in New York City, so you'll never run out of events 
food and just things to do. And to get in, the average ACT is between a 34 and a 35, and the average SAT is between a 1500 and 1560, with a total acceptance rate of about 6%. So moving on to the top three, Yale University in New Haven, Connecticut. George Bush, Meryl Streep, and Anderson Cooper are just a few of the successful alumni that came out of Yale. The most popular majors here are social sciences, biology, history, and engineering, and it has top ranked departments in pretty much every area. The school also leads summer session programs, where many Yale students study abroad while getting credit for classes. Yale kind of reminds me of Hogwarts a little bit, with traditions like holiday dinner, where students have a feast on the last day of classes. The school also has residential colleges, similar to houses in Hogwarts, where students live all of college and form very tight-knit bonds with each other. So if you want to get in, the average ACT is between a 33 and a 35, and the average SAT is between a 1470 and 1560, for a total acceptance rate of around 6%. And coming in at number two, we have Princeton University in New Jersey. Some places have it ranked number one, some have it ranked number two, so it's definitely a toss-up here. First of all, Princeton's one of the oldest colleges in the country, founded in 1746. Three former U.S. presidents have attended the school, so you'll definitely be in good company. Academic-wise, pretty much every Princeton senior writes a senior thesis, which can be on almost any topic. I think it's pretty cool to think that you could write a research paper on any topic, and you have world-class faculty helping you every step of the way. Common majors here include social sciences, biology, and engineering, and Princeton graduates earn a hefty $161,000 in mid-career pay. Socially, Princeton is known for its eating club. These are organizations that are kind of like a mix between a dining hall and a fraternity. So students eat their meals here and participate in various events. Sounds pretty awesome to me. So if you want to get in, the average ACT is between a 32 and a 36, and the average SAT is between a 1450 and 1600, with a total acceptance rate of around 6%. And that leaves us with number one, Harvard University in Cambridge, Massachusetts. If anything, Harvard has the most recognizable name out of any school on this list, and a majority of ranking sites listed as either number one or number two in the Ivy League rankings. It's also the oldest college in the US, so it had a head start on all the other Ivy Leagues. Alumni include Bill Gates, Theodore Roosevelt, and Barack Obama. And academic-wise, it has top-ranked departments in arts and humanities, engineering, science, and social science. And about half of students take advantage of the study abroad opportunity, as well as master's and dual degree programs that the school offers. So to get in, the average ACT is between a 33 and a 35, and the average SAT is around a 15, 20 or higher, for an insane acceptance rate of 5%. So I'm curious, what do you think about this list, and what video should I make next? I'm Jake with College Crown, and I'll see you next time.